Jin Wu was an E-ranked loser who could not even defeat a goblin in fight. But when he was just away from one strike that would end him, a game-type level system saved his life and made him the strongest hunter ever. In past, portals that can connect to alternate dimensions appeared in the world. They contain bizarre creatures called magic beasts who are immune to conventional weaponry. The only people who have awakened their special abilities can fight these beasts, and they are called hunters. The hunters are ranked from S to E based on their magic powers, but there's a catch. Once these powers have awakened, no one can change them. In the present day, being hunter is a common thing, and people hunt beasts for living. Sung Jinwoo, our main protagonist, is an E-ranked hunter with nickname, Weakest Hunter of Humankind. But everyone likes him, because as per the rules, if Jinwoo joins any raid, it will be pretty easy going. During the next raid, all other hunters fight the beasts easily, while Jinwoo, being the weakest, even struggles to fight against a mere goblin. He got severely injured, but thankfully, a hunter named Park approaches for his help and kill the goblin. Jinwoo's healer friend Juhi treats his wounds while others complete the dungeon. Everyone was unhappy with the loot, but suddenly one of them finds a pretty deep tunnel, meaning double dungeon. Six of the hunters, including Juhi, were against proceeding, while other seven were in favor. Juhi was upset with Jinwoo because he just escaped his death. But Jinwoo had his own reasons. He wants to do it because he needs money for his mother's treatment and for his little sister. Upon approaching the final stage, blue fire lightens up the place while different creepy statues are placed all around there. There are three rules of the final stage. First, revere God. Second, praise God. And third is to prove your faith to God. Those who do not follow the rules will not leave alive. Suddenly the door closes and everyone is trapped inside. One of the hunters tries to escape, but he is killed with a single blow. The eyes of one of the statues moves and emits very strong rays of light and burns one or two hunters alive. The statue does not attack anyone unless they are moving, which means they have to follow the rules. The fastest hunter among them tries to escape, but still he was not that fast and only faces death. Jinwoo suddenly remembers the commandment and notices that if they bow their heads, the statue will not attack them. So, as they all bow their heads, the statue puts on a creepiest smile ever and stands up, moving towards the hunters. Because the second rule was to praise God, one of the hunters tries that, but it seems this statue does not want this type of praise. Everyone just runs for their lives, and then Jinwoo realizes the other statues must have something to do with the praise instead of killing them. He instructs everyone to run to the statues with instruments as their music prevent the big statue to attack them. However, as Jinwoo and Juhi approach there, the statue appears to be working with only one person, leaving Jinwoo to run towards the other singing statue. But just as somehow he manages to save his life, he has lost his leg. Juhi tries to heal Jinwoo, but it was beyond her powers and capabilities. On the other hand, with the big statue back on his seat, he raises his hand and stage for the last commandment appears on the ground. Jinwoo thinks it is an altar for treasure and sacrifices to the god, because the last commandment is to prove your faith to God. Raid leader, Sung is sunt to the altar, but as he approaches there, one yellow fire ignites on the ground, making it clear that it isn't about sacrifice. As everyone gather there, blue flames surround them and the gate is open for them. But there is a catch. Four of them must stare the statues until the blue flames are over, because if they don't, they will be dead. Watching the open gate, three of the hunters could not resist and escape the dungeon easily, leaving Jinwoo, Juhi, and raid leader Sung. Now it's time for the sacrifice, and definitely Jinwoo could not move, apologizing to Juhi, and allows Sung to leave with her. The statues begin to attack Jinwoo mercilessly, while Jinwoo complains about his life that his life was stupid. He tried to be stronger but couldn't. All people around him are selfish. He has family too, and wanted to make it out alive. Before the final strike that will end his life, the blue fire vanishes and a dialogue box appear in front of him, congratulating for completing the quest and asking if he wants to be a special player, otherwise his heart will stop. With accepting the terms, Jinwoo suddenly awakens in the hospital. He was surprised to see his body parts are still intact and he has no scars on his body. Then two members of Hunter Association enter the room and inform that he was unconscious for three days. After losing his arm, Sung was unable to continue being Hunter, and Juhi has been traumatized and is under psychiatric care. Shockingly, when higher hunters went to the double dungeon tunnel, 
they only found Jinwu lying unconscious and no sign of the temple. They suspect Jinwu might have experienced a second awakening, but as they measure his mana again, it was still the lowest of humankind, making the hunters to leave. It appears only Jinwu can see the floating screens, and the system is designed to assist the development of the player, and failure will result in a penalty. Jinwu accepts a daily quest of strength training, but did not take it seriously, and ultimately he has to face the penalty. Suddenly the world begins to shake, and Jinwu finds himself in a desert with a huge monster chasing him. It is a penalty quest, and he has to survive four hours running from the monster. Jinwu begins to run at his full speed dodging monsters' attacks, and after four most difficulty hours, he somehow manages to return to the hospital with the lesson that he cannot mess with the system. The following day, he gets ready for the workout and completes his strength training quest. After each quest, he gets rewards and points to increase his different abilities, which he can feel in real. In his reward boxes, Jinwu receives a key to an instant dungeon, which will help him become stronger. He starts training to increase his strength points and remembers his past, why he has to be strong. At the railway station, Jinwu opens the instant dungeon, which appears to be in the separate dimension. He cannot leave until he clears the dungeon or use a teleportation stone. Soon he is attacked by a couple of goblins, which got him PTSD from his previous failure. But he still manages to stop their attacks and stabs through one of them. He feels stronger and instantly kills the other two. However, things were just starting as a fierce steel-fanged lichen entered the fight and broke Jinwu's knife, leaving him with bare hands. Jinwu begins to fight with the wolf and is still evenly matched with bare hands. It seems his training was fruitful, because now even his body feels so much lighter than before. Suddenly, Jinwu remembers he has weapons in his inventory and summons a strong sword, which allows him to kill the wolf with only one strike. Jinwu levels up and his pain fades instantly. He continues to fight lichens, and by killing them, he receives more points, some dungeon items, and gold, reaching level 15 and even receiving a teleportation stone. But he did not want to stop weak, so he continued with the dungeon. Soon, he is attacked by the boss of the dungeon. Jinwu tries to stop its attacks, but the snake was amazingly powerful and sends him flying with its strength. Jinwu tries to fight back again and again, but fails each time until he awakens his special powers. He tries once again, and this time, with the help of his brutal strength, he chokes the boss of Dungeon to death. This is his ultimate win, which makes him more powerful and confident in himself, adding a special dagger and poison to his inventory. Soon, the dungeon ends, and he is back to the real world. Outside the station, he senses a powerful D-rank magic beast fighting with the hunters, the magic beast appears to be much more powerful than the hunters, that's why the battle is running long. Juhi is also fighting alongside the hunters, but due to the trauma they have suffered, she is unable to focus and help. However, it all ends as Jinwu arrives there and throws his broken sword towards the beast and allowing others to take him down. Jinwu does not take the credits and walk away, but Juhi witnesses his presence. That was all for today. New videos will be out soon. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Bye.